Hello everybody, Adam Hurd, 973 Ramp again, and we are going to be looking at designing a, a whole robot, or systems of a robot, in one sketch for the purpose of figuring out a lot of your dimensions before you start taking stuff 3D. So let's say, so first of all we're using the fake robot with bumpers from the previous example. Let's say we're doing an arm where you know you want to lift, lift something up uh, a certain height and let's, I don't know, make that up now, and 72 inches. And you want to know, can I get an arm in my size box that can lift that high? So there's our arm. Put a big sprocket on there, I think uh, 60 tooth is like 7 inches or so. Oh no, it's smaller than that. No, we'll put it 7. Put the center line of this arm, 4 inches inside the frame. Uh, put point on top there, make that like 59 inches, and obviously if you had better ideas of what you were doing, like that's a 62 sprocket specifically, you would look these numbers up and do things better. Well, I mean, you could dimension this arm to be a length and play with it and guess and check, and for reasonably simple things like this, that would work, and you go, oh, clearly I can reach 60 inches, um, no problem, and you can do things Another cool thing I like to do on this is do a driven dimension for both your height and your reach. So we so that one's driven, come in and make this one driven. And now you can move your arm around and see what's going on in real time. And that's pretty cool. So what if it was something harder? Like I need to reach 96 inches and I need to pick up the thing on the ground 12 inches in front of my robot. And I'm really simplifying this. Obviously, if we knew more about the game, or maybe 18 inches in front of the robot. If we knew more about the game and the pick, the game pieces and all that, we would make these things more thorough. But uh, the takeaway here is the thought process, not any specific numbers. So let's make this a double jointed arm now. And you could do things like make this a single jointed arm and an elevator. You could do all sorts of stuff like that and go, well, I want to touch that point and I want to reach that point and notice our stuff's just free floating now because what that means is there's a lot of possible solutions and I want to fit in the size box so maybe we do another arm on here and fitting in the size box could initially be constrained by like uh, ooh, put you back in this point need a crossover You know, this point's two inches in the size box, and then let's drag this elbow back down. Cool. So now we're seeing this is a fairly long arm, actually. Um, maybe it's longer than it needs to be. You can start it coming in and constraining some dimensions if you want. Go, you know, I don't want my wrist to be longer than 20 inches. Let's see, can we do what I want? Unfortunately, we see that that's actually making the arm too long to fit in the size box. You also got to be a little careful with your process on things like this because it's easy to make stuff that just blows up and that's no good um, and also it's possible that you make a you're asking it to do something impossible so sometimes it's you making a bad logical move and you get things stuff and sometimes also you're asking an arm to do the impossible clearly what we're doing here is not impossible um, so you can see that um, what else can we show here I guess I'm kind of really underselling the power of this because I really love this and what I'll do is once I've decided you know we're gonna do an arm this long uh, wrist that long maybe you'll start detailing a claw and like showing how the claw could pick up like say a tube off the ground uh, I'll make these lines two inches thick to show the arm you can start checking like actual dimensions not just does the stick figure fit but does the actual tubes fit and you could even come in and figure out exact center of the center on these arms and have all these numbers good to go so that when you go to 3D you're not just making a tube with a hole and some tubes with holes and then iterating there you're going to 3D with all your numbers good to go or at least close enough such that you've got the stuff done and then maybe after the fact you go oh god you know I'd like an inch more reach and you change that but at least you're not fighting this battle at the 3D level because what you do at 3D is you'd make all this 3D, make an assembly and then measure the height or make a sketch of the assembly to measure height and that's just crazy so obviously we've drawn a really funky arm here and I'm sorry that I picked four numbers maybe that number should be like 84 to make that a little easier and maybe you can do things like well I want to maximize the length of my first stage so make that 50 or something, I want a long first arm and also keep in mind with the stuff that is uh, 
a line, that doesn't mean it has to be. This actually could be a curved thing, and it's just a line is showing the pivot to pivot. So here's something reasonable that fits. Um, this does point out one of the things that I, I have trouble with on 2D arms is, or two jointed arms is, you can hit a lot of points, but you don't have great control of the angle of your end effector for big ranges of travel. Um, for small things, like in this height range, obviously, you could put this at pretty much any angle you want and be fine. Well, that's another thing you got to be careful for, accidentally banged those two points together. Um, so let's nuke th some of this maybe, or let's draw a new robot over here that's a little simpler for the sake of this discussion. So we're going to make this horizontal. This is another cool thing you can do in that you can draw multiple robots in the same thing. Uh, and then we'll put a little guy on there, and then we'll do our mast. So let's say we have, I'll do this at 1 thou now. Ah, I meant to do 1 thou. And that's at, you know, 51. Let's say we discover, or 50, because we showed that 50 fits, and we're happy with 50. Maybe 50 could be a little longer. Well, now you can do the same process over here. What am I looking for? Uh, driven dimension. And, you know, come and go, oh, we have a 40-inch travel elevator, or 41-inch, I guess. I'll go with 41. And explore things and see, oh, I can get much more horizontal at that height, or whatever it is you're concerned with looking at, you can show that here. Uh, you know, I'm going to pause the video real quick, actually, and dig out, if I can find it, our sketch from 2011 that was our entire robot before we catted anything in 3D. That, that's a pretty cool guy, so I'm going to pause. All right, I'm back. So this first sketch, actually, is not what I was looking for, but it's something I stumbled across that was kind of cool that I'm going to bring in and show you guys. And this is actually when we thought the robot had to fit in a smaller size cylinder than it did, and the rules were later clarified. You can see we were designed actually to be a double joint arm. Uh, we had a fear of elevators at the time. In hindsight, that was dumb. Uh, we really could have done an elevator, and that would have been awesome. But we did an arm. And this shows a double joint arm pivoting in the very back, cause, and uh, this would be able to sweep up, staying in the size box as that joint went up, and then we would score over the back. Uh, from the get-go, we really wanted the ability to pick up on one side, score on the other, because we figured the teams that did elevators would stay in that front zone and use their smaller footprint to uh, to maneuver quickly in there, and we'd be the person running long for tubes, so we would drive one way, grab a tube, drive backwards, pull it over the top, and score it. Because um, we figured we would not be the number one offensive robot in our line, so we'd be the second scorer. So we wanted to play that long game and let the people with the elevators play the short game. But this is what I've done. You know, you can see I've made stuff two inches now, and there's a fake claw in there. And you know, some of the stuff you come in and iterate later when you know more about the stuff. But this is a reasonable robot concept here. I mean, this is a essentially a really powerful hand sketch. You could come in and change the dimensions. You could move stuff around and show people. I mean, a lot of cool stuff in here. So then, actually, this is what that later became. Uh, we did actually pivot from this point but not drawn like that here's our arm you, and drawn through the same method um, although these are dimension now what that usually is is I'll play that game where you let this be free floating and get what you want and that was probably you know 43.857 inches and it's like well it's a lot easier to make 44 so once you get stuff iterated I'll then come in and make that 44 then there's a really cool thing we did over here actually and that uh this isn't very clear from the side, but this is the base of our arm. This is the sprocket on the shoulder. This is the cluster of sprockets going up to the wrist. Uh, I'll post a link to the picture of this robot in the comment section of the video. Uh, these two things are the plates of our wrist. That's the sprocket on the wrist. So we actually sat down and figured out our mass spacing, all of our spacer spacing and stuff. And what's actually really cool is all these spacers on this robot are like pretty clean numbers. And the drive didn't have any spacers, but that's a separate issue. So all this spacing was really clean uh, on the basis that some of the machine parts, like this tube, was some funky length, but you're making one tube, it's not that big of a deal, you're making it on a mill anyway. Um, and this let us essentially design the whole arm in 2D, get all the numbers figured out, and make the 3D version so fast. So I know there's some systems you really can't do this on, but for anything you can, it's just great to do this. Um, and what I've done a little more of now, and it's and I like it in some ways and I don't like it in other ways, is this often will become the first sketch of the most pertinent 
part of the assembly so that I get as much linking of dimensions as possible without having to use things like global variables and equations and all that. But like I said in the previous video, if you have a solution to that stuff, let us know. Also, you'll notice we're way below the size box. We realized pretty early that uh, we were long enough to do what we wanted, even though it doesn't quite look like that with no tube in there, without going taller, so we shaved it shorter to save that weight and CG, obviously. All right, so I'll post a video or a clip, a picture of this robot in the comment section, and hopefully you guys picked up a thing or two on using sketches to save yourself a huge amount of time. I mean, a lot of the tips I showed in our first videos saved a little bit of time. This right here saves days. This makes you look amazing when you decide, I'm done designing, let's make it in 3D, and you design a whole 3D robot with correct dimensions real fast. God, this is... This is a process I love. I really can't stress this enough. I should have done our first video on this, but I thought people would think I'm crazy if this is the video I let in with. I think some people may still think I'm crazy doing this kind of stuff, but I cannot stress enough that I love this, and it saves us a huge amount of time. It's, uh, I guess, really a glorified hand sketch. I mean, it's a hand sketch that you have the power to move and change and show people, give your buddy. Uh, another thing I really like to do is, you know, when you're kind of halfway through iterating, and you have something that sort of works, you're like, God, I, I think I can get this double joint arm to work, but I'm not there yet. We'll save it, make 10 copies, give it to everyone on the team who even slightly cares about that kind of stuff, and tell them, hey, this is what I'm going for. It'd be great if someone could find it. And in the past, it's surprised me sometimes who the person that finds it. Uh, there's been a couple times when I've been stuck on geometry, and kids who aren't even really that into design, but are like, hey, I'm going to open that up. Solved it. There was a kid who was actually on the team his senior year in 2011, and he did a lot of the iteration of this geometry and did a very good job even though he really didn't design like that was the first time he designed was that moment so yeah these are powerful hand sketches if someone doesn't know how to use SOLIDWORKS at all but just learns this that's great in my mind so yeah do this please